what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? Quincy Jones, the producer of Michael Jackson's most iconic records, has been awarded $9.4 million in a trial against Michael Jackson's estate over royalties. Quincy Jones has been attempting to prove that he was denied $30 million in royalties. He sued in 2013, claiming that in addition to being owed significant amount of monies and royalties, he was denied the right to remix the music he created with Michael Jackson. The lawsuit covered royalties from Off the Wall, Thriller, Bad, the This Is It soundtrack, and two Cirque du Soleil shows. In a statement to The Hollywood Reporter, Quincy said this, As an artist, maintaining the vision and integrity of one's creation is of paramount importance. I, along with the team I assembled with Michael, took great care and purpose in creating these albums, and it has always given me a great sense of pride and comfort that three decades after they were originally recorded, these songs are still being played in every corner of the world. The lawsuit was never about Michael. It was about protecting the integrity of the work we all did in the recording studio and the legacy of what we created. Although this judgment is not the full amount that I was seeking, I am very grateful that the jury decided in our favor in this matter. I view it not only as a victory for myself personally, but for artists' rights overall. Michael Jackson's estate conceded in court that Quincy Jones was owed less than $400,000 in royalties and claimed that the producer hadn't been paid that money due to accounting errors. They argued, however, that Quincy Jones wasn't owed $30 million. Court testimony revealed that Jones received $18 million in royalties following Michael Jackson's death. In addition to claiming that he was owed royalties for Michael Jackson's albums, Quincy also claimed that he was entitled to profits from Jackson's 1991 joint venture with Sony, a share of the net receipts for the 2009 film Michael Jackson's This Is It, and net profits from movies instead of just licensing fees from songs used in soundtracks. Michael Jackson's estate attorney, Howard Wiseman, previously told Billboard that if Jones was offered a substantial amount of money, an appeal could happen. If he gets major money, obviously, there's a process post-trial, he said. Hey, man, a deal is a deal. I mean, come on. Michael was big. He was a megastar. But everybody knows that Quincy Jones had a heavy hand in that happening. I mean, a good producer can oftentimes dictate how great an artist will be. You get a good producer. I'm talking about a good one like Quincy Jones. Now, it's important before some of y'all just go eight crazy that Quincy is not suing Michael Jackson. He is suing Michael Jackson's estate. He said all along that, hey man, I ain't got nothing to do. I ain't got no ill will toward Michael Jackson. This is not about Michael. It's about preserving the integrity of the music and ultimately me getting my motherfucking money. No, I work for that money. It's mine. I was surprised at the number, $9.4 million. I was thinking more so along the lines of maybe, uh, what, $100 million or something? I mean, I guess they paid him something, but still, like, they tripping over the $9.4 million. I still would have thought it would have been a lot more money. I'm thinking that that $30 million that Quincy was originally asking for, that's probably more accurate. But like he said, hey, man, I'm just thankful that they gave me that and that they ruled in my favor. I really was thinking like, wow, that it, when you think how big those albums were and just even singular songs were, man, that is crazy how well those records did. And although Quincy didn't do a lot of writing the lyrics, he did produce. He orchestrated. He was the puppet master. 
he was the, the, the orchestrator. He put, he, he had a heavy, heavy hand in Michael Jackson's success. And if Michael was that successful, you got to know that that man had a lot to do with it. If he was the producer, which he was. He put those pieces together. Even his biggest song, Thriller, it was his idea to bring in Vincent Price. See, producers, still, I mean, the artist does stuff like this too, but the producer has a whole lot of, the producer is, a, is responsible for arranging songs. It, it, they're responsible for the cohesiveness of all the elements that are put in the songs, the, the instrumental elements, the, the, the lyrical components, the way it moves, all of that, that's, that's the production, you know, and that's a major part of making music. And oftentimes producers don't get enough credit. I mean, you get people like Dr. Dre, everybody knows how great Dr. Dre is. And, and, and most people know how great Quincy Jones is, but there are so many other producers that go under the radar that has a heavy hand in some of your favorite artists that you hear. It's these producers. I mean, and that's why if you separate the producer from the artist, a lot of time the artists don't have the same amount of success. But also, the producers don't have the same amount of success because Quincy Jones wasn't as successful without Michael Jackson as he was with him and vice versa. Michael was not as successful without Quincy as he was with Quincy Jones. So you put the two together, you put the right producer together with the right artist, and man, you can create magic. That's how it was for us, you know, Ghetto Boys, the, uh, the producers that we had around us, our core a group of producers, starting with Reddy Red. You know, I don't even know if there's another producer out there could have had the vision that Reddy Red had at that time, Reddy Red was before his time. He gave us our sound. So it was him. We just took that sound, what he had when he left the group, and we built on. We built on from there. But man, I can't see anybody else doing it, having that vision that he had to, to sample that Scarface. So Reddy Red was the first producer to sample Scarface in a, in a hip hop record, in any record. And just having that vision, uh, that that spoke that speaks volume, and it really really uh, shaped the GB sound. Quincy Jones sued the estate, not Michael Jackson. So y'all stop trying to attack the man like he trying to do Michael dirty. He trying to turn on a friend and all that. No man, it's it's these people that run these estates. Uh, oftentimes. They have a different vision than the person who worked for the money, who earned that money to build that estate. I can see an episode of South Park coming on this real soon. Quincy Jones is perhaps one of the most, well not perhaps, I mean he is, one of the most successful producers of all time. Not just successful, but he's really, really good at what he does. And so... I can't see having a problem with him getting his money. All of this bickering over money and going back and forth with court proceedings makes you wonder how much the lawyers are getting out of this. Because you know at the end of the day, all they're gonna do is file a bunch of appeals and motions to fleece their clients. Because that's what lawyers do. Pay the man, he earned it. Michael Jackson is perhaps the greatest entertainer of all time. Perhaps the greatest artist of all time. But he cannot have achieved that level of success without Quincy Jones, and everybody knows that. They were a great team. Pay the man. If Michael Jackson was here, I'm sure he'd say the same thing. No more talk. What, what the ladies talking about? Damn. Order, Texas.